Hello and welcome to Key Factors presented by theraceguide.com.au. Stu and Mike here to take you through the card at Rose Hill Gardens this weekend. So that is good luck for everyone at Scone because after a whole day there on Friday, they don't have to be backing up on Sunday, Mike. There'll be a few sore heads there, I'm sure. But what a weekend we're in for. There's usually a few rough types on Saturday after a big night Friday night. They, don't, they won't come down the highway to Rose Hill. And good news for us, a bit of a closer drive going to Parramatta. But I do miss Scones to you as well. Yeah, always a great carnival up there. Good luck to everyone on Friday. But let's have a look to Rose Hill Gardens now at the weather this weekend. It's a little bit colder in Sydney this weekend, Mike. Yeah, and very different. Remember, Scone on the Saturdays, they come five, six wide, swoop down the outside. It should be off rails at Rose Hill. But a soft track, a westerly wind, it should be pretty fair on Saturday, I think. OK, so let's have a look at the card of racing here as we do at this time of the evening because we've got a look at five. There's a big nine race card, but some nice races later on the day, the Hortensia and, of course, the Luskin Star. The last two races have lots of emergencies. I'm <laughs> waiting until Friday or Saturday. Have a good play at them. Race two, the two-year-olds. We don't usually do two-year-old races, but we'll have a crack at that. The John Massar, we always do staying races, don't we? And the features five, six and seven. All right, nice and early. The two-year-olds to light things up early in the day at Rose Hill. So let's have a look at the market now as we get into the big car to racing at Rose Hill. And it's headliner on top. Nice wide open market here, $5. The star turn filly resuming. Nice trial. Beat home Ashima on debut back in January. A bit of form there around stay inside. We've got Ashima, $5.50. He looks to get a nice trail here from gate number three. Shihonka on the third, third line there at $5.50. A capitalist filly off a nice debut. you think this horse can progress again. Sonnet Star at $7.50. Another star turn filly in the race. Form behind Najmati on debut. Looks OK for this. And out to Extreme, extreme Time at $9.00. And, of course, title impact there at $9.50. But $5.00 the field here, Mike. Two-year-olds. Here we go. Very interesting race. That's why we're doing it. We're looking for tough horses that find the line. Let's have a look at a Warwick Farm replay, a Waterhouse horse. You mentioned it by Capitalist. That sire is flying. Yeah, sure I could is. have afforded that sire two years ago. <laughs> I cannot afford him now. Midfield gets to the outside. Pretty strong form race. The time was good. And you have to love the way she finds the line. She tough horses that find the line in a testing race. is great for a two-year-old race on Saturday. Yeah, OK. So you've, you've just mentioned something there. All the profiling work the team does. Is that the sort of thing you look for early on in a career? For any form analyst, the first thing you look for is when the pressure goes on, they start to feel the pain barrier. How do they respond? The last 100 metres, this filly responds very well. Steve. OK, there's one we've got to have a look at. Now, Mike, I'm going to take you right out the outback to Canamble here. Let's see if this horse felt the pressure because it was in front a long way on the turn and just kept extending and uh, just kept on going along. How far did this win by? I don't know the exact <laughs> margin, but a lap, I think. Two-year-old yeah, handicap good. for Canamble, 1,100 metres. The form wasn't terrible. The time was pretty good. It was getting wetter and wetter. The next race was much slower. Dominant win, won a trial since an impressive type. I know it's Canamble form, <laughs> but at least he's proved in the wet and he does seem to find the line. Oh, beautiful looking track. Got out there for the country championships. It all looked immaculate out there just a couple of weeks it's ago. It's a long drive for two races, isn't it? Some of those guys were home an hour later. Oh, it was, but uh, good luck to everyone out there. And good luck to those horses that do come into town from there as well. So let's have a look now to get race number two started early in the day at Rose Hill Gardens. Let's have a look at the key factors here for form, importantly, Mike. Very, very hard to split. Very hard to rate the Canamble form, but it's right there, I think. Shahonka Warwick Farm, maybe on top of Nishima. She was three wide, no cover last start in Brisbane. Light her up as well. OK, so we had $5 a field in the market and that key factors graphic pretty much says $5 a field here. So can anything make up any ground here? Track distance and conditions. Testing conditions, I think Shahonka should like it. Headliner, a bit of a risk in soft track. Extreme time, maybe a risk. Is Shima OK in the soft and the Sonnet Star should be fine too? OK, so a couple of favourites there, but headliner with a bit of work to do. Now, how does the speed map affect the two-year-olds Well, there's here? plenty of pressure and the horse is trailing up in a nice spot. A Shahonka, a Shima and it's a shallow. OK, you're getting a little tongue twisted there. <laughs> Shahonka and Ashima. Oh, I reckon I got them out They're right. the ones out in front. You did well, mate. What about progression here? Two-year-olds? Yeah, good progressive horses. Title impact unbeaten. Sky Castle unbeaten. Could be anything. OK, so a bit of love for the Canamba runner there in title impact. But Shahonka there with Ashima. They were the ones that were pretty much out in front early in the key factors there. No one caught them. But headliner, interesting. Didn't really do any catch-up work there late throughout the key factors. So let's have a look now. Bring all these ratings in and, of course, the odds because two-year-olds, you know, we've still got to keep betting on these sort of races, Mike. I think so, especially when Ashima, who is $5.50, does not hit the line, does she? She'll sprint well. 
She'll get up the inside, but she has to pick late. She always does, which leaves us with two other key chances. And they are the bets for us. Shahonka smashes the line. Progression more than others. And loves a soft track and tidal impact. Canamble form could shop at Rose Hill on Saturday. OK, so there's a nice value there. Tidal impact for Shahonka there. One of the favourites there for us for the two-year-olds in race number two. We're going to jump now straight to race number three over the 2,000 metres. And as a benchmark 78, as we have a look at the market, Blazer Trail, $5, not far off, Exo Boom Fresh. We'll need some luck from the outside gate here. We've got Achiever, $5.50, coming through some nice races in the Carbine Club and, of course, the Packer Plate. Takes on the older horses here. Amika, $6.50, went 15 to 1,800 metres last start when battled on OK. Lakeen, interesting runner, $8, finished off well last time out, straight out to the 2,000 metres here for the former French import. Welsh legend, $8.50, missed the kick in the Epona, got a Big weight here off a of fresh and, of course, Savory. $8.50, racing well and out in trip for the first time. So we've gone from $5 a field on the two-year-olds to $5 a field here in a race number three, Mike. Open staying race, but I like these races. Domo Stu, Canterbury, 1,550 yes, metres. Very different race last start. And let's have a look at a British day, a third up back in the pack. I know he was back on the rails, which is the right spot to be, but he was tight and held up slightly, ran on well late. Strong form race. Stockman, Mr. Dependable, one mm. since. Luntzi's won since, obviously, as well. And Paris Sound, not bad. Probably should have won last start. Up to 2,000 metres, British staying form. I've said it so many times before. <laughs> it's just better than last year. Well, yeah, and I mean, was it surprising all that money that came for it fresh over an unsuitable trip? Yeah, the stable obviously likes it, but sometimes that money can be misleading for Godolphin first up. Yeah, OK, those imports always do progress. Let's have a look now at Savory and, of course, Mr G. Savory was on the inside here, Mike. Mr G not making up too much ground at the end, but what do we make of this? Well, Mr G is strong and progressive. I maybe wanted to see a bit more. You can see Luntzies, yeah, agree. who we saw in the previous replay, was good. Savory, up in distance, very strong, only beaten by a good one late. But the extra rain and the heavy track and the dew, just a bit risk, bit of a risk for the Bjorn Baker Galloper. OK, interesting. So a couple of risks there out of that replay. So let's have a look now at all the key factors here to see where we can go in race number three over the 2,000 metres. This is the sort of trip you love, Mike. <laughs> yeah, Savory. Savory second in a good Saturday race is better than Blazer Trail. Light him up. OK, so Savory there out in front as we get the race started. Track distance and conditions. Look, I know he doesn't like a wet track, but 2,000 metres for Blazer Trail should be good if he comes this way. Achiever likes the wet and Lakeen, British bloodline, British <laughs> staying form. You could give him a couple of lengths, I think. All right, so a bit of gold there for a couple of the favourites there, bringing them right back into the race. Now, the speed map here. How are we playing this over 2,000? Well, they, they could back it off a bit. Savory, probably unlucky not to get a gold bar, will be near pace. Achiever could lead. Amica right there. And Lakeen could box eat. OK, so Blazer Trail, it's got a fair bit of work to do here as we make our way through to the key factors and we hit the line with progression. Lakeen improving every star, which I love. Fourth up and Blazer Trail could do anything. Third up as well. OK, so it did get a bit of love there, the favourite at the end. But Lakeen out by a length there from Achiever. So I guess another interesting race from a betting point of view, $5 the field. But I think we helped you a bit there throughout the key factors. We showed you that Lakeen replay. These imports, they do always improve deeper into their preparations, Mike. And well, $8, it might just be the day where we can cash in on this one. Maybe there's dual acceptors, those two. What are they doing, Achiever? Is he going north? Blazer Trail, is he going north? We know. Thursday Not night? yet. No, we don't know. Maybe we'll scratch and <laughs> go to Ella Keen. Each way, British days, 2,000 metres, wet track. They are simply better than ours, and I cannot believe he's eight bucks, too. Yeah, seems to get a lot of ticks there. Lakeen in race number three. We are two down at Rose Hill this weekend. Plenty more to come after the break. Welcome back to Key Factors, presented by theraceguide.com.au. We are making our way through the card at Rose Hill Gardens this Saturday. And the next we're going to have a look at is race number five. It is the English three-year-old guineas over the 1,400 metres for the three-year-olds. And as we have a look at the top of the market, don't these two just absolutely dominate? Prime Star, $2.90, resuming. Stepped all the way out to the mile on the round with guineas in the autumn. Liked its trial. Exo Boom, $3.30. So, so reliable. Race wide with cover for a good win there in the Hawkesbury Guineas. And look at that, right out to $11. We've got Lennon, big winner over Exo Boom. Last preparation. Love the way this horse hit the line latest and looks ready now, you'd think. Sensationalisation, 11. Nicky's fling, 11. And Midland racing well last two. Pushed through a tight gap to score there at Warwick Farm. Looks a versatile type, but these two, Mike, 2 dollars and $3.30. Let's have a go. English restricted, not a very deep race, and two very, very, very strong favourites. Let's have a look at both of them. 
Starting with Exo Boom, who is a horse with a beautiful stride, uncomplicated type, not a big muscular type, mm -hmm. just well put together, big beautiful stride. And the thing about this horse is he just gets better and better deeper into his preparation. Last preparation he was so dominant, third, fourth up. So when he came to this race second up at listed level, you think maybe he'll run well and improve. He did better than that, Stu, he won. Yeah, look, gets comes to the outside here and looks so, so reliable. It's never finished worse than second. And well, as you say, this it just does improve. I don't think he saw the horse on the inside till very late. And when he sees it, he lifts again late. He's a line finder and very, very progressive. Good point. So he had a little cheeky look over there, you reckon? Some horses are smart, just like us, Stu. Uh, like all right, I didn't think we'd go too there this to, Too smart to win. <laughs> Let's have a look at Prime Star now. Now, obviously right in the race, it is favourite for a reason. I mean, this is the Hobartville Mike at Group 2 level, and, well, it hangs on all right here. Well, he's got the same weight as Exo Boom, but in a handicap, he'd probably be having eight kilograms more, which is, what, five, six lengths over 1,400 metres. He's right here in a Group 2 race. He's not disgraced. He tries hard. He handles soft ground. And if you're worried about stage of prep risk, looking for other targets... The stable must have targeted this race because they knew it was going to be so weak. Yeah, that is a strong form reference there, of course, in that race with Aegon. So let's have a look now to see where we're going to be playing in this race at Rose Hill Gardens. Let's have a look at the key factors here. And we're talking about the form here, Mike. I mean, Prime Star, well, it's got to be right there with that sort of form. Simply the best form. We came off that a bit in the Group 1 last start. Exo Boom was only OK. The rating last start, sensationalisation. Nicky's fling rated OK but they had everything go their way last start. OK, so they've rated OK, but they're only a length behind. So let's see if the odds really do sort of dictate this race. Track distance and conditions. Back to 14, suits Prime Star. Exo Boom, does he want 15 now? We'll find out. Yeah, hit the line pretty well there, didn't he? So we've got Prime Star here just edging ahead of the other favourite, Exo Boom. OK, map, is this important? Well, definitely less risk for Prime Star near pace. Nicky's fling and Midland near pace as well. OK, so there goes Prime Star. So some nice gold bars for the favourite there. And what about progression here? Just when you think it's easy. Exo Boom <laughs> bounces a couple of lengths every start into his prep. And we're expecting the same third up. Well, there he goes. A double kicker there for Exo Boom. Levelling up to Prime Star. The market said it was a two-horse race. The key factors say this is a two-horse race. So it looks as though this one might come down to odds, unless you can see anything there that jumps out of the page there for a place. I know you love a place bet, Mike. So let's bring <laughs> everything in here to see where we're going to play in the English ratings. Because, look, $3.30, $2.90. Did we see enough there to say one or the other? I had a place bet today that came second last year. That's not a very good place. But it's Exo Boom Prime Star. <laughs> <laughs> no. Look, we know the level of Prime Star and just the progression of Exo Boom makes us lean that way, but the market's got them both pretty right, so maybe wait late. Yeah, OK. Nicky's flings well exposed. Lennon could be the value horse. So we think the market's right, but we're going with Exo Boom to win and Lennon for the value bet, but maybe wait late. They should both drift. OK, so some good advice there. Maybe wait late. It's Exo Boom there for us. Lennon, the value bet in the race, which takes us to now the Luskin Star Stakes, one of the features here at Rose Hill Gardens on the weekend. Listed level over 1,300 metres, and well, we've had some wide open betting markets. Not here. Lost and running, $1.50. Thank you very much. Five wins from the six starts. Absolutely bolted in at Ramwick, over the 1,200 metres fresh. Enchanted heart form from last week. Obviously franked. 11.11. $5.50, a wide run in the hallmark behind Splintex. Wasn't beaten far and ran third in this race last year, of course, to Ranier. And then it's out to Bandersnatch at $9, resuming, Mike. a dollar fifty here, lost and running. We saw what it did last start. Is this the new excitement machine of Sydney Racing? I think he is, and I've loved him from day one, and I've never, ever backed him. I don't know why, probably because of a bad punter sometimes, but lost <laughs> and running last start. 1,200 metres. Look, he jumped midfield from the inside, which is risky, but nothing else took him on. He got to the lead, and once he finds that rolling position on pace, he is just a dominant type. He puts a massive gap on them, eased down at the end. He ran a similar time to Splintex, and there's got to be more in the tanks, too. OK, so you do spend so much time profiling these horses, Mike. A horse like this, does it have to do this? Get out front and, as you say, roll? Well, I don't think it has to, but I think it rates better when it does. It's a yep. big, muscular type, and a wetter, a wetter track on Saturday is a bit of a risk. If it's chopped up, I won't be betting. Yep. But if it's dry and on pace as a winning, I might be sure. You haven't backed it yet, but you might be jumping in at $1.50. <laughs> Interesting. Let's Late see who the party as always. Let's see who it's up against. And one of those is an 11-11. I mean, very well performed, this horse. This is the hallmark, Mike. And well, I guess this day, you know, you could say it was wide. It's Splintex form. And, well, it wasn't beaten too far. No, and you, it's three wide, no cover. Sometimes it's hard to judge runs three wide, no cover. Usually at a couple of lengths over 1,200 yep. metres, which puts him right on the firing line late. First up, 
He was in a group one. Obviously, he was okay, but well beaten again. He's going okay, but last prep he had a couple of good performances that put him right up in the handicap ratings. And I just don't think he can win, giving lost and running weight. Yeah, good point. Okay, and I guess when we get to the speed map, we'll see where these two horses are going to be in the race. Yeah, I think lost and running leads and probably wins. Okay, well, it's got barrier four there, 11-11 on the weekend, so probably won't be three wide like we saw in that replay. So let's have a look now at all the key factors and, of course, the form. We saw how dominant that horse lost and running was last start, so I'm sure we're lighting it up. A couple of lengths at least with more in the tank. OK, track distance and conditions. Can anyone make ground on the $1.50 favourite? Military zone is interesting because back in distance is better, but his trials are only fair. Order again likes a wet track and True Detective could improve. OK, what about, here we go. The speed map, Mike. What are we going to do here? Well, lost and running can't get a better position, so we'll leave him there. 11-11 could so get, get some the trail, gold. so yeah. get some gold. OK, so a nice trail there for 11-11, but they've still got a couple of links to make up here on lost and running. We are running through these, Mike, but progression... I mean, what's left in the tank for this well, horse? Well, that's the thing, isn't it? He's going to beat them by two or three lengths on what he's done, and he's probably got two or three lengths at least. They're talking Everest, you. All right, long way out, but it's a decent <laughs> horse, isn't it? And it just went further ahead there in the key factors ratings. The gold bars just absolutely lit up there for the favourite, but it is $1.50. So, I mean, is this the sort of race you've just got to ask yourself if it's that sort of price, have a go? I mean, what sort of price could it start? Well, I don't know. I think probably shorter than what it is, $1.30, $1.40. It's a hard one to rate when they're yep. that good. But the thing is, you look through the field and there's just nothing there. Banner Snatch, only one trial. 11-11, yeah. not sure he's at his peak. Dealmaker, a long, long break. And Thorin Interesting could place. Runner. Definitely a yard watch, but could start 50s and do nothing as well. Yeah. Equally, lost and running. I am sorry, guys at home. We love picking roughies, but yeah. this time... We've got to go with the crowd. Well, look, if it's a $1.50 shot and it wins by the length of the straight there like it did on key factors, the punters will be happy. So it's lost and running there for us as well as many others, I'm sure, on Saturday. Let's wrap it up now with race number seven, the Hortensia Stakes. What a great mare that horse was here over the 1,100 metres. And we've got Embracer, the $3.80 favourite, bolted in resuming a gelding at Hawkesbury, obviously beating way up in the sky, Adelong and Vada, who are all here as well, fresh off those great trials. Fatus, $3.90 resumed off a lovely trial. Former round Fiesta and California Zimble from the spring. We've got Fiesta there, $7.50. Fresh and since peaking on its run at 1,200 metres. We know this horse is over, better over 1,100. And California Zimble there, $10. Fresh and since dropping out of the Sapphire. Of course, Vada there at 10 as well. And an add along four kilo weight swing on Embracer, importantly. And that was a great win by Embracer, Mike. We were on that last start, but it definitely wasn't $3.80. Yeah, rock hard track, gelded. Big odds first up, mm. wasn't he? And he he was very, very dominant. Have a look at his last start, his first up, last start performance. Three wide, no cover, which only adds merit, but he was right down in the weights and put a big margin. Adlong, look, she was kind of exposed, leading on her own there on a rock hard track. Kind of a hard thing to do. And she gets a four kilogram swing on Embracer and probably likes a wet track better than him. Vada. I think she was OK. She's not a dry tracker and she runs home for fifth and gets a weight turnaround too. Yeah, well, I know we had Adelong as a value in the in this race that day, Mike, but I guess Embracer, look, it's that wide. It, was that the place it was going to be? Well, probably a harder spot than we hoped for, but it was still mm. dominant. The track conditions and that stiff westerly have to be a risk, though, on Saturday for a horse. It's getting short now. OK, yeah, it is, but the, the running away there, so it's obviously come back very, very well. Well, let's go back to the Melbourne Spring Carnival here, and we see a few of these. And, well, Fiesta wins the race, Mike. And importantly here, I mean, a lot of people are going to, you know, you do the profiles here, 1,100 metres. Is that this horse's go? Oh, I think it is. Chris Waller loves getting his horses over to 12, 1,300, 1,400 metres. But please, Chris, <laughs> keep this mare over 1,100 metres. She's won, she's won three from four. She's dominant here, beating Zanaya, California's emblem for Toos. She's also entered in Brisbane over 1,200 metres on a heavy track with Nash. Yep which I know is tempting, <laughs> but she's much more likely to win at Rose Hill. All right, keep her here at Rose Hill by the sounds of it. Let's Who's have a look. Who's got the star power <laughs> number? I need it. <laughs> All right, let's have a look now to unravel this whole race in full. Race number seven. Here we go. Embracer, as we said, we were on last start. That was some good form. Yeah, dominant, but Fiesta drops back in great as well. For two, bad at the end of last prep, but she flies fresh. Wow, for twos. Has a stack of ground to make up here, Mike. Hang on. Track distance conditions. Yeah, dry to wet. It's a risk for Embracer. For two should be fine. And Fiesta back to 1,100 metres. 
surprise, surprise, as a kicker. OK, so more gold there for Fiesta. Let's hope Chris Waller is watching. What about the speed map here? Quite risky for Fatus, isn't it? Drawn wide, Varda wide as well, and tactical advantage a bit wide out. Risky for Fatus. There is no love for Fatus at all, the second favourite here. Fiesta on top by a length from Embracer and California Zimbal. As we hit the line, who's got all the progression here? There it is. Fatus is unbeaten <laughs> fresh, and Varda can improve second up. OK, it had to get somewhere a little bit closer, and it did, but it did not catch Fiesta, California Zimbal and Embracer. They look to be the three there that we've got on top here late in the day on this good car of racing at Rose Hill Garden. So let's see where we're going to head in race number seven for a bet. Fiesta, it's been in all of our chat just then throughout the replays. Obviously some nice odds as well. Embracer, look, this is one of those times, Mike, you can back it once, but then you just got to say nah at this price. Or oh, Wednesday when it was 7.50, I wish I said yeah. But <laughs> was I it that big? Yeah, I think it was, but it was a couple of scratchings as well. Look, West, westerly wind, wet track, <laughs> the, the a, lot wind of temp, factor. a lot of tempo, Fiesta can stalk, and we know she's got a massive, massive yep. turn of foot on her home track, on a soft track. 57 kilograms I think is okay. She's a big, big bet for me if she comes this way. And Adelong, big odds each way as well. All right, so it's Fiesta there to wrap up things with Adelong as the value. There's a look at Rose Hill Gardens. Plenty more to come after the break. We've got our $100 hot seat coming your way. Welcome back to Key Factors, presented by theraceguide.com.au as we're having a look at the Rose Hill meeting this weekend. I've been enjoying those few races we just had a look at there, Mike. There's a couple of shorties engaged, but there's a couple at value. But you've got your eyes over the rest of the car. Where else can we play on Saturday? The bookies might be right, but there is some value. Adrian Siglatano from the Race Guide tipped us. Don't forget, Monica, very hard to beat on a soft track. Shahonka, very strong, 1,100 metres wet track. Lakeen, British days are better at eight bucks. Newsreader can do it for Ronnie Duffy at 5.50. Exo boom down the outside at 3.30. Lost and running by 10 lengths at $1.50. <laughs> Fiesta, please stay in Sydney at 7.50. Hulk for Waller as well at eight. And count to Rupee with hot Marway form. Can win race nine at 3.30. OK, so a nice spread in there all the way from $1.50 out there. To, oh, we haven't got anything really at big double figures there, Mike. So hopefully the $100 <laughs> hot seat we can play for as a bit of value. As win, that's the main thing. We were back in the winning last week. Brandon Berg, we had that as a nice bet on the show. That was in the hot seat. So what do we got for us this week, mate? Yeah, I feel like Aurora Florentina disappointed, but Brandon Berg didn't. Two big each way plays. Lakeen, 2,000 metres, British days. We love them. Fiesta, yep. 1,100 metres. She loves it. And a rare all up. Lakina <laughs> place from the nice barrier. Oh, there we running. go. We got some places. Just here. wins. And Fiesta, she can peak that last 20 metres. So we'll do her a place as well. All right, nice. So Lakina and Fiesta pretty much benchmarking the $100 hot seat there and lost and running the $1.50 shot. OK, I like it. There we go. But we you got... won't be on track, will you, Stu? Because you've got a big weekend ahead, I'm mate. off to Magic Round, mate. Let's Look how get, excited get me up for eight <laughs> games of rugby league up there. It's going to be great. There's going to be so much good racing around the country. But Rose Hill Gardens, head to the raceguide.com.au for all your feature form guides there. Good luck on the punt. Good luck at Magic Round. Wherever you are watching this weekend, enjoy. Have a great weekend, mate. Have a great weekend again.